Losing a bunch of belly fat in a few short weeks is not only possible, but I'm gonna give you the exact framework for you to see drastic improvements in just 30 days. The truth is you can lose a substantial amount of belly fat in a few short weeks while improving health, energy levels, and overall body composition. So in today's video, I'm gonna lay out the most applicable steps to quickly burn off the belly fat while retaining as much muscle as possible. Obviously, we all know that to drop fat, we have to reduce our calories and eat healthy foods. And there are a lot of different ways that you can do this. But in today's video, I wanna provide a super simple step-by-step -step guide that you can try without overthinking it. And taking action is the biggest key to actually losing that belly fat. So the very first step that I'd like you to take is to decrease your meal frequency. And I know this runs counter to much of the mainstream advice that convinces you that you have to eat five or six meals a day. Instead, I'd rather you try to eat only one or two meals a day top. We want to minimize not only the amount of calories you take in per day, but also the amount of willpower and complexity that it takes to burn as much fat as possible. One meal or two meals a day is ideal for this, and unless I'm actively trying to build muscle and trying to bulk up, it's the way I've been eating for years. You're not going to lose muscle, you're not going to slow your metabolism down, and you're not even going to be hungry if you set up your one or two meals a day properly and give your body some time to adjust. The benefit of eating fewer times is that your stomach has a natural stretch reflex that indicates to your brain that you're full, so you're only physically gonna be able to eat so much per meal. And I'll explain exactly what you're gonna be putting into your meal if you want a super simplified approach that isn't based on counting calories at all. But before we jump into that, I want you to plan on eating absolutely nothing for breakfast. A good idea is to start your day with black coffee rather than a meal because it may help reduce your appetite and most people can quickly adapt to just skipping breakfast with relative ease. Now, if you can't wait to just have one meal at night, I recommend setting up two meals a day in that case. One sometime around lunch and the other an hour or so before bed. The next step is to go shopping for the simplest foods that can make delicious tasting meals that fill you up and provide the nutrients that your body needs. The general advice that I always give is to go shopping on the outside aisles of the grocery store in sections like produce, meat and seafood, dairy and eggs, and also a few of the inner aisles, but today I wanna to get much more specific to make this guide very directly applicable and straight to the point. So when you get to the grocery store, start in the produce section and buy already cut up fruit like watermelon, pineapple, and honeydew melon. You can also get some avocados in this section, and you can buy whole fruit that's easy to eat and doesn't require prep time like apples, bananas, bananas and berries. But the point is to buy things that are simple to prepare. You don't wanna to have to cut up a whole watermelon every time that you're feeling hungry because we wanna make the dieting process as easy and hassle-free as possible. It already takes enough willpower as it is to cut back on the amount of calories that you're eating per day. If you're starving and you run over to the fridge, you're much more likely to grab watermelon if it's already prepped rather than something else that's unhealthy in your fridge. So after produce, you're gonna move on to the meat and seafood section. Here, I want you to get one pound portion amounts of protein, either salmon, ground turkey, ground chicken, lean ground beef, chicken breast, and you can also get other seafood like shrimp or white fish. Next, you're gonna to go to the frozen veggie section. I highly recommend frozen veggies over raw veggies because they're already cut up, they're just as nutritious, and they're so much easier to prepare. You should get some frozen bags of green vegetables like broccoli, a California mixed vegetable bag that will include carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower, and you can get a bag of mixed peppers. If your grocery store also has stir fry options, you can get those as well. Next, I recommend you get some carbs for taste, although, of course, you don't have to do this, but for me, I enjoy my meals so much more with some carbs in them. So the simplest way to do this without spending a ton of time cooking is to get the Uncle Ben's already cooked pouches of brown rice. Then make sure you have a high heat oil like avocado oil. And finally, you're gonna get your snacks. And unfortunately, these are not gonna be like the snacks that you're typically used to. Your snacks should all be easy to access, high in protein, low in fat, and low in carbs. So these will include flavored tuna packets, sardines, nitrate and nitrate-free lean deli cuts, eggs, low-fat cottage cheese, Jack Link's Zero Sugar Beef Jerky, and protein bars. Just keep in mind that with protein bars, you shouldn't eat more than two of them in total per day because they're the only thing I've mentioned so far that has many added ingredients, salt, and extra calories aside from the core nutritional aspects you get from the protein. From there, the next step is to make sure that you make your one or two meals a day, and stir fries, in my opinion, are the easiest to make with these ingredients. To make your super simple stir fry, even if you don't know how to cook, you would take a 12 to 14 inch frying pan and fill it with mixed vegetables. Then cover it with a lid until they're fully cooked down. 
You don't need to add any oil or even spray your pan for this part because these frozen vegetables will be full of water and that'll prevent them from sticking if you use a lid. Now, seasonings are super important because if your meal doesn't taste good, you're not gonna continue eating it and you'll give up on your diet. I would argue that it's more important for it to taste good than to even save some additional calories because just by eating this amount of vegetables, you're probably already gonna be saving a ton of calories. Now, even if you don't know how to cook, I'm gonna give you the only four seasonings you need to make any healthy meal taste delicious. If you're cooking seafood, magic salmon seasoning is great. Adobo all-purpose seasoning pretty much goes great on anything. McCormick smokehouse seasoning is amazing on any chicken, turkey, or meat. And finally, you have soy sauce, which I use a lot in my stir fries. So once your vegetables are cooked down and most of the water has evaporated, take your pound of protein, throw it in, and add some seasonings on top and cover that with a lid. Once that's cooked, break apart your protein, then add one packet of Uncle Ben's brown rice. Next, you're gonna add two to three tablespoons of your high heat oil. And then I like to add either adobo to the vegetables or a bunch of soy sauce. Again, the meal has to taste good or else you're not gonna eat it consistently. Then you mix it all together and fry it with an open lid. If you're eating one meal a day, you're gonna eat this meal with an avocado until you're full and you're probably not gonna be able to eat anywhere near the whole thing because it's so filling. If you're eating two meals, simply divide the meal whatever way that you'd like. Personally, I'd prefer to have a small lunch and a big dinner, so the bulk of my meal I would leave for the evening if I were eating two meals. Now on top of this meal, you can still eat your two to three fifths of fruit per day. This is about three large apple or a store-bought package of watermelon. Everyone can use their own fist to eye out how much fruit they should be having in a day. And then finally, you also have your snack protein sources, which you can eat after your meal or meals without limitation. So the tuna packets, the sardines and water, the deli cuts, they're all gonna help you add protein to your diet with very low risk of overeating. And that's gonna be your diet in a nutshell. I guarantee you, even if you don't track your calories, you'll burn a bunch of fat over the course of 30 days on this kind of a plan. Now again, there are a million ways to design a healthy diet. You could replace the rice for potatoes or the meats for seitan or tofu or the avocados for more fruit. I just wanted to give you guys a straightforward way to set up your plan so there's no question marks and you can get started immediately. You'll naturally feel full from these foods that you find on the outside aisles of your store. So if you can't finish your meal or meals, that's totally fine. If you wanna track your calories, I encourage you to do so, but I firmly believe that you won't even have to with this kind of a plan. But let's move on to step number four, which is to lift weights. Sure, cardio can help you burn some additional calories, but you're gonna be burning more than enough fat with a filling single ingredient food natural diet like the one I just went over. You wanna do resistance training at least three to four days per week to maintain as much muscle as possible as you slim down. And you wanna to try to lift heavy weights that cause you to fail at 10 reps tops. If you're just gonna do three to four days a week, each of those days should stagger between upper and lower body. For upper body, you're gonna be supersetting push exercises like chest presses and overhead presses with pull exercises like pull-ups and rows. For lower body, you'll be focusing on exercises like squats, deadlifts, lunges, and Bulgarian split squats. Generally, nine to 12 heavy sets for upper and lower body can be more than enough, but again, the key is to go heavy. If you'd like more specific workout instructions for your upper and lower body days, I have a ton of videos on this channel that'll walk you through step by step how you should set up your workout. Now, the final step is to repeat the last four steps every day for 30 days. Obviously, you can switch up the veggies you use, the carbs you use, the protein you use for your meal, but you should follow this exact framework consistently every day. Again, there are a million other ways you can do this, but this is a direct, straight to the point, get started today way that you can use to substantially reduce belly fat in the next few weeks without being starving all the time. This last step of being consistent is probably the most important because it's not gonna do much of anything if you only stick to this for a few days. So that about wraps it up. I really hope this video helps you out. And if it does, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, I have tons of other videos that give more generalized advice that you can use to customize your own diet in a more flexible way. The diet that I described here has worked very well for me and clients of mine that are busy and don't mind eating the same things every day. If you want a done for you solution that requires no trial and error, you can also try my free six week shred. There you'll get a personalized diet plan, a 42 day workout plan and a recipe book. And of course, a coach to guide you through the entire process. To find out more, you can click the link below in the description, or you could head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.